Hi everybody, so I have been through this before, but it never hurts to review things. What I've got here is a coil of wire and a neodymium magnet. Now then, if I take my wire and I pass it across my magnet up and down, it's going to generate something. If I pass it side to side, it's going to generate something. But if I do it like that, where it's going backwards and forwards in a straight line, It'll generate absolutely nothing at all, and of course that's really interesting if you think about it. However, there is a bit of method to this madness. Everything has to be at 90 degrees. The wire has got to be at 90 degrees to the field, the direction of movement has got to be at 90 degrees. What it means is if I take a coil of wire like this, which is basically what you find in every single motor and generator that exists in the world at the moment, and do that with it, then the only bits that are going to generate are this bit and this bit. This bit and this bit are going backwards and forwards. They're doing absolutely nothing in terms of generation. Of course, they are linking everything together, and that's why you have them, because you need to link it all together to get the electricity out. But they don't generate anything. And that means they pull down the power-to-weight ratio, because a big lump of copper doing absolutely zip. Be great, wouldn't it? If we could create a coil that will generate, but we can remove some of this, well, we can. And we have looked at this before. The way we can do it is by winding something called a serpentine coil. What a serpentine coil is? Well, the clue's in the name. It's wound like a serpent. So normally what you do is you wind a coil round and round and round. It's actually just a mechanical thing. It's, it's easy to do it, and so we just wind it round and round. A serpent, you wind it like an S shape, going in an S. It can be a real pain to wind if you wind it in situ. However, there is a really simple method to wind it. The easy way is this. Now, it's not my invention. This is actually by a guy you may know as Grendel and I know as Peter. Peter lives pretty close to me, and when he's got a brainwave that he wants to chat about, he comes around for some coffee. And he invented this. Now, he's given me uh, permission to put it onto Tinkercad. I think he's put it on Thingiverse. I'll put some links in the description. But this is a serpentine coil winder, and it consists of a number of bits. He's got these two nice semicircles, so it doesn't catch the coil. And then we've got these plastic bits that stick out, and we can put them together and slide these up and down to make a coil of any size we want. And you'll notice I've put some M6 bolts in there to hold them in position. Okay, so there's it set up, and of course, the question is, how did I know how far to put that? Well, let's say, for example, I want to wind a serpentine coil to fit on that, and the reason that's the example is because I want to wind a serpentine coil to fit on that, and that'll become clearer later. But we're going to wind a serpentine coil to fit on this stator. Now, it is 65 millimeters there on the up and down direction, and there's 12 of them. So 12 times 65 gives me my length of wire. But I also need it to go around here, obviously, so what I need is the circumference times 2, because it's a top and a bottom. Now, it's 60 millimeters across, so circumference is pi times diameter, Add all of that together and I get the length of wire that I'm going to need to go down, around, up, around, down, around, up, and like a serpent. So that's how I work out how much wire I need. Now these are 220 millimetres around, so 440 millimetres. I've worked out the size that I want there. Minus 440, divide by 2, and I've got this distance that I put there. Now, I usually add on 10% just for error. But once I've done that, I've got the amount of wire that I need. Set those up so that's the right separation. Turns out it's 38 centimetres, and then we're ready to wind it. And to wind it, stick your wire through one of these holes so it doesn't come away, and then... Just wind, and we're going to wind, I don't know, hundreds. So once you've wound it, what you do is get some strips of tape and put those strips of tape around the wire the right distance. And for me, it's 6.5, because that was the length of that. And then we've got a couple of centimetres to bend round. Now, it's without a doubt that bend is too big at this stage. I was going to wind loads of these, and I would obviously hone it down. But I quite like it too big just to make sure it fits, rather than having to squeeze that on there with a bit of disappointment. We go along there, and that will create that. Then we can take it off the horse. So when you finish taping it up and it's off the horse, or jig, that's what you get, a really neat little coil. There's 200 turns in this one, and you 
<laughs> random hey you can put whatever you like in it i put 200 in this but to make it into its serpent what we need to do is find the bit that would cross between the bottom there and in my case it's that thin bit and just bend it and then we go around the whole thing bending it into its serpent shape so once you've bent it round, it'll form this kind of crown or serpent eating its own tail, I suppose. But it will go neatly onto your stator, going in between those two lug points to make the actual coil arrangement. Okay, there you go. Now it's a little off, and it often is the first time I do it. I just adjust it as I go along, but that is a serpentine coil on a stator body. And I'm obviously going to use that for something in another video, and I have made a couple of other coils, so we've got 600 turns in all. Now it probably took me about, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes to make that coil. So thank you very much to Peter for actually designing that, and as I say, the link is in the description if you want it, and it certainly makes making coils an awful lot easier. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.